Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to talk about cycle count thresholds in Dynamics 365. Cycle count thresholds is a pretty neat feature that allows you to automatically initiate a cycle count once the on hand of an item reaches a certain level in a location. So the example we're going to set up today is when the item level goes, the on hand level goes down to zero. So the easiest number for me to count would be zero if there's nothing there. So that's why I'm going to set my threshold to zero. It's really easy to set up. So let's uh, start with the setup and then we'll come back in a minute with the example. Okay, so let's take a look at and see how we're going to set up these thresholds. So where we're going to go is we're going to go into warehouse management. Uh, so we're going to go to warehouse management and then we're going to go to setup. Under the cycle counting uh, section, there's a uh, cycle count threshold, so that's where we're going to go. I've got two thresholds in here, but the one that I'm going to we're going to look at today is the CC items here. And what you have to do is you have to give it a give it an ID. So I've given it an um, ID of CC items, and, I'm, and basically the the uh, name is for I'm, I've got some items that start with CC, um, and I'll show you how to define those items in just a second. And then I've given a description. Uh, so this is CC items with a zero quantity is when this is going to kick off. And then setting up the general rule here, we've got a threshold quantity and a threshold percentage. So my threshold quantity is going to be zero and the threshold percentage is zero. Now what controls whether the system is going to use which one of these is going to be this cycle count threshold type, which is the, uh, which I've got it set to quantity. So you're, so you can either do quantity or percentage here. Um, my unit's going to be each. Um, and then I want to process these cycle counts immediately. So that's an important flag. And then days between cycle counting. So if you don't want to be, you know, counting these every day, if it's something that would go down to zero or go below your threshold every day, you know, you can, uh, you can adjust your days between cycle counts. And then the work pool ID, I'm not assigning any work pools, but you can uh, assign work pools to, um, to segregate off the work. Now I should mention on the threshold count quantity, it does kick this off when it reaches that quantity. So if I if I set this to 50, for example, when the coin on hand gets at 50 or below, that's what's going to kick it off. It's not like when it gets to 49, it's going to kick it off. It's when it gets to the exact number 50, is it, it's going to kick it off. Okay. So let's take take a look at an item. Oh, one more thing I need to show you, or actually two more things we'll talk about. Um, so the the first thing we'll we'll talk about is the select items. So this is going to say which items are, are going to come up for this. Uh, rule. And as I mentioned before, I'm doing just the CC item. So anything that starts with CC. So I've just got my um, item number here defined with a CC asterisk, which would just give me anything that starts with a CC. Now, one other additional piece of setup that's here that I really haven't done anything with is the select locations. Mine are blank, but you can specify, you know, locations that you want to um, apply this to. For example, if you only want to apply it to picking locations might be a good idea. Okay. All right, so now that we've seen the setup, it's pretty simple to, to actually set up and get your rules set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in the actual example where I've got an item number that we're going to use, and we're going to pick the item, and we'll see that once I pick the item in the device, it's going to automatically flip me to the uh, to the cycle count screen, and the, uh, the user is going to, going to do the cycle count. So let's go ahead and look at that now. Okay, so let's take a look at our on hand. So we've got item number CC002. And I've got uh, in, in location FL-016, I've got one, okay? So at the same time, I've created a sales order for one of a CC002. Uh, I have this item reserved. Um, it's reserved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and release this to the warehouse. All right, so now that's released to the warehouse. If we go look at, take a look at the work, let me refresh this screen here. So I've got a, a single work that was created to pick one. And so this picking of the one is going to take us down to a zero, which should initiate our, our cycle count. Okay. Um, so let me close that there. And let's go ahead and go to the app. Let me get, copy this item number here, or this work ID number here. So I have it. And I'm going to go, so let me just get out of here. And so where we're going to go is we're going to go to the outbound picking. And we're going to go to sales picking. And then I'm going to enter in the work ID. So I'm going to paste that in there. And then, so it's telling me to pick uh, from FL0116, I don't remember CC002 for one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that, uh, and since this is gonna go to bay door in a minute, so it's gonna wanna want a license plate. So let me just put in a license plate here. Look up a number there, Let's say okay. And so this is actually gonna take me into the, the cycle count 
here. So remember my cycle count is kicking off if there's zero on hand. So really the, the all the picker has to do if there's really zero there is click that checkbox and the next screen you'll see it'll flip you right to the bay door. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to actually cycle count like I've got some there. So you know I showed one but maybe I've got uh, two more there, right? So what we'll do is I'm going to click this here and my item is going to be uh, CC002. CC002. I'm going to say click that there. And it's going to ask me for the quantity. I'll say there's there's two more. I'm going to say OK. And if there's a counting reason code that's going to show up. Um, but going to go ahead and say OK. That's for, for my cycle counting um, uh, parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. And now this location is complete. I'm going to say OK again. And now, see, it's going to take me and ask me to put my CC002 to the, the bay door and finish the actual pick. So I'll go ahead and say OK to that. All right. And so then that completes the work. So if we go back over on the D365 side, when I refresh, this work's going to go away because we've completed it. Um, but then what we also see in here is a cycle count also gets created and it's pending review because I added some to it. Now, if it's you know zero and it matches and you just hit OK, you won't see this pending review. But uh, from here on out, since I did change this, it's, it's the exact same process as any other cycle count. So uh, if I can click on, I can click on the item, go look at the work up here and go to the cycle counting screen. It'll show me that um, I expected zero, but I actually counted two there. And I can just accept that account. And that posts our journal for us. And then if we close out of that and do our refresh, our, our cycle count is done. So then if we come back to our on hand and take a look, uh, refresh that. So now we have two on hand there. Okay. So as we saw, cycle count threshold is, is pretty easy to set up and it's pretty uh, seamless to the user. And it just it's a great piece to add on to any cycle counting program in between your main inventory counts. It just helps you keep your inventory straight in your locations. It's just a you know just an easy check that's fairly easy to implement. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like or a thumbs up. And, and I release one of these videos about once a week. Please subscribe. Um, and until next time, thanks for watching.